Yellowstone National Park is home to the largest active supervolcano on Earth, and if it were to blow, it would change our world forever. But here's the thing, it won't be alone, because while Yellowstone is the largest and most well-known, it's far from the only supervolcano still active in our world today. And all across North America, these sleeping giants are starting to wake up. Hi, I'm here to tell you the story of North America's supervolcanoes. You might know me from my social media where I share stories about all the amazing places I get to visit. But for this story, I'm going to be staying safely at home because today we're exploring some of the most dangerous places on Earth. There are currently seven known supervolcanoes here in North America, each capable of destroying entire countries in an instant. A supervolcano is basically just a fancy term for a volcano that has the capacity to blow more than 40 cubic miles of ash and debris into the atmosphere, which is enough to cover the entire United States in several inches of ash if it were to erupt. All of these supervolcanoes have been dormant for thousands of years, but they're showing signs that they may be waking up once again. And let's start with the largest, Lagarita Caldera. This beast is located in southern Colorado, on the border with New Mexico. It has been here since the Cretaceous period, a time when dinosaurs roamed the earth, and it blew so much debris into the air that its eruption column was taller than Mount Everest. Its last major eruption was 27 million years ago, and it hasn't done anything since. So odds are you'll probably be safe visiting the nearby Great Sand Dunes National Park. But next up is the Long Valley Caldera, also located in California, this time near the eastern Sierra Nevada mountain range. This one has been here since the Pliocene Epoch, right around the time humans started making fire, and it erupted so violently that the caldera formed by its explosion is actually the second largest in the world. The last major eruption was 760,000 years ago, but there have been smaller eruptions since then and it is still considered very active today. Next we head north to Oregon where we find the Crater Lake Caldera. This one is a little different because the caldera itself was formed by a meteorite impact rather than a volcanic eruption. But the volcano that's sitting inside of it has been very active throughout history. The good news is that it's now protected inside Crater Lake National Park. The bad news is that it's highly likely that this volcano will blow again. Now we come to one of the most famous supervolcanoes on our list, Yellowstone. Located in Wyoming, this is the only supervolcano in the world that's currently exhibiting all three major signs of an impending eruption. There are hydrothermal features such as geysers and hot springs which indicate magma is rising beneath the surface. The ground is bulging in some areas as more magma chambers are created and seismic activity has increased dramatically over the past few years. If Yellowstone were to erupt today, it could cause global chaos, blocking out the sun and causing an ice age. But we are still very lucky that it is located in the middle of a national park because if it blew when this area was inhabited by indigenous people, the death toll could have been staggering. But Yellowstone is not the only supervolcano in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Just to the east, in the Absaroka range of the Beartooth Wilderness, is the Norris Geyser Basin, home to the most powerful geyser on Earth, Steamboat Geyser. Steamboat is an extremely powerful geyser that erupts every few years and shoots water hundreds of feet into the air. And the reason it does this is because there's a magma chamber just below it. In fact, there are several magma chambers down here, which scientists believe may form part of a supervolcano larger than Yellowstone. The last major eruption in this area happened 8 million years ago, and it hasn't done anything significant since. But don't let its dormancy fool you, because scientists believe it's only a matter of time before it blows again. Heading back to California, we have the Coso Volcanic Field. This one is pretty interesting because instead of being a single volcano, it's actually made up of many individual cinder cones and lava flows that stretch for tens of miles. It has been here since the Pleistocene Epoch, and its most recent major eruption was 770,000 years ago. Now it's technically dormant, but it's released a small lava flow in the past 100 years. Finally, we come to the last supervolcano on our list, Mount Mazama. You may recognize this one because it's home to Crater Lake, 
the deepest lake in the United States. Millions of years ago, this volcano was similar to Mount Vesuvius in Italy, and it blew so violently that its summit collapsed, leaving behind a giant crater. For millions of years, this crater filled with rainwater to become the lake we see today. And although the volcano is dormant, the area surrounding the lake is still considered very dangerous due to the high frequency of earthquakes in the region. In total, these seven volcanoes have the potential to destroy everything in North America and most of Mexico and Canada as well. Their eruptions have shaped our world and caused dramatic climate change throughout history. And although they are currently dormant, they are showing signs that they may be waking up. So what can we do to prepare? Well, thankfully for us, the chances of them blowing in our lifetime are incredibly low. All seven of these supervolcanoes are closely monitored by the United States Geological Survey, and they've given each one a threat score from one to five, one being unlikely to ever blow again, and five being likely to blow in our lifetime. Of all seven, only Yellowstone and Long Valley have a threat score of three meaning they could potentially erupt within the next 1,000 years. All the others are either dormant or have a threat score of one or two, meaning their likelihood of erupting anytime soon is exceptionally low. Still, we should never let our guard down, and even though the chance of a super-eruption happening in our lifetime is about 1%, that still means there is a 1% chance we will lose everything tomorrow. When you think about it like that, it makes you realize how fragile our world really is. But despite all this, I am personally still very optimistic about the future. You see, although these supervolcanoes are a potential doomsday device, they've also been the reason for life as we know it today. After the largest supereruption in history, the Yellowstone supereruption, 640,000 years ago, the dust eventually settled and a new world was born. All of the continents were covered in fertile soil that allowed plants to grow faster and bigger than ever before. This led to the rapid diversification of mammals and eventually gave rise to humans. So, although it's possible that a super-eruption could wipe out the human race, it's also possible that it could kickstart a new era of life on Earth. The reality is that these super-eruptions are a natural and necessary part of our planet's history. They've been happening since the Earth was young, and they will continue long after we are gone. Someday it might happen again, and someday it will happen again. But until then, we can marvel at the beauty of our world, and be grateful that we get to experience it while it lasts. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the most dangerous places in North America, and thanks to my supporters for making it possible for me to explore our world and share its stories with everyone. If you're interested in seeing more of my work, be sure to check out my other videos. And as always, thanks for watching.